Hello again. This is Building This City. This is Soap the Great here. And if you will notice, things look a little different in this world, don't they? Yeah, this is not what we're used to. And uh, that's for good reason. I am in a creative, super flat test world. And I have been evaluating a couple of different iron farm designs. So you notice here, this one is based on a design made by a guy, uh, JL, username JL2579, I believe. And DocM77 did a tutorial video on this one. And then over here is one based on a design by a guy by the name of Nim. Um, and so what I've done is I've put them both together. And then I built a little hut right in the middle of them, and I let it run overnight, rather, rather uh, for about five hours overnight. And uh, we're going to see which one did better. We're going to look at both of them in just a bit. But let's see. So we got here this one or three after the test. So let's bring up the calculator real quick. So that is in the span of five hours, three complete stacks. So that's 232. And then this one three complete stacks and you can already see it's down by a little bit. You see this extra junk and that's because day night cycles and zombies and skeletons get caught on that hopper highway. So so let's take a look at each one. I think it's clear which one wins so we'll start over here first. Now I say this is based on I did some updates because the I did notice in Nim's design, the floor, you know what, we need to get sound down. Just messing with villagers, and they are kind of noisy. There's more doors in Nim's design, um, which supports more villagers. So you see there's six in that pocket, five in that one. Six and five. Okay, so and we got them glitching out. It's probably because that floor is not big enough. Um, but I don't think that matters so much. The original issue that I saw was that the floor for uh, for spawning was 14 by 14 and the way uh, the way iron golems spawn is in a 16 by 16 area around the center of the village now the center of the village is going to be here because we've got an even number roughly of villagers on each side and then the doors are all centered around this point um, it was originally 14 by 14, which led to some YouTube comments um, of iron golems spawning on the wall, which decreases your efficiency, because if they get stuck there, then, uh, well, it's going to register as, hey, you've got an iron golem, and it won't produce any more. Uh, his design just left it open, so you'd have to figure out your own kill mechanism. Um, I've got this, some lava, and the iron golem gets pushed into the lava, and all of the goodies go into here. So, um, so there's a few modifications. So it's not a pure design for for, for that one, from what I saw on YouTube. Um, 
the efficiency is down a little bit. I did notice some iron golems glitching. Okay, world, let's slow it in. Get about 30 frames a second right now. Had to make sure it was on far render distance so that. Um, go back to normal. That'll be a little bit better. What well, with um, with fraps running. Um, I needed far render distance while I was running the test so that both farms would be loaded in. Um, they are 180 blocks apart, which is more than enough. Um, so I'm going to link both tutorials in the description, but we'll take a quick look here. This has a spawn floor of 18 by 18, which is um, it's it's a little bit more than you need but that's fine. The villagers don't glitch out. There's only enough doors to support four villagers per cell. It's uh, 12 doors to a size, 48 total. Divide that by three, you get 16. And then if you set up the villagers correctly, uh, they will evenly distribute themselves um, once you get two in each cell they will spread themselves out and as you can see based on that um, test there um, it was working out just fine so I did add a switch here on the suggestion of one of the other guys on the server um, if an iron golem is found in the center of a village no more will spawn and so what this will do so you turn on the switch that pushes a block in place keeps iron golem in the center of the village and uh, that means that minecraft will not generate any new iron golems if one is still there so when you want to turn it back on just pull that lever up that block comes back and the iron golem falls down and progresses towards the kill chamber. So there's a, a line of lava that runs through that. And then when they get in here, they get crushed. I don't think one is coming though. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and anyway, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna wait around too much for it. So um, I did make another update. Um, I want this to run all the time, not just when we come and step on a pressure plate. So I've got a uh, trip wire in place and when that gets triggered uh, you'll see a sticky piston right there and that pushes that block out. And it's got to be a solid block, it can't be glass. Um, got to be a solid block and that effectively crushes the iron golem. It's already been softened by this lava and so it takes uh, just a couple seconds um, in the crusher. So anyway, um, I think this design wins. Um, I was hoping the other one would because it is a little bit easier to build, but this would be fine. And once it gets going, then we'll have iron. Um, the design by JL and uh, explained by Dokian has uh, one one of these cells 70 up in the air, and then another set um, an additional from this point right here another 33 that way and then another one up in the air um, that would be exceedingly difficult for what uh, what we need or and uh, exceedingly difficult to do and uh, a little bit overkill for what we need instead I'm going to put one cell this one into the spawn chunks and um, it will run even when we're not logged in, when nobody is logged in, or when we're out and about 
far away from the main compound. So, um, so yeah, I'll talk about spawn chunks when I get into the main world and get building on it. We'll talk about villager mechanics a little bit. And uh, so, yeah, it will run all the time, and it's got about an average of one golem every six minutes, and that means ten an hour. And if it runs all the time, even when we're not logged in, then um, that means 960 iron ingots a day, which will more than cover our needs as a team. So, uh, so yeah. Anyway, let's get on with building this thing, and um, I will see you over in the survival multiplayer world. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I'm still in the creative world, but I wanted to show you this here. Just saw one show up. Uh, I've got the sound turned down. Hopefully it's not too loud. We'll, we'll back off a little bit. So here he goes. Okay. Back off. Back off. Okay. Now, well, watch this. Okay, so he's going to drop in there. And there we go. Five out of that one. Okay. And two roses. Which will actually be renamed in the 1.7. Which just... Well, the snapshot just got released. Um, they're now... You know, and I don't remember what they're called, but it's not roses anymore. Roses have been changed to a too high flower. I don't have the snapshot installed because um, I don't want to mess up any of the worlds with the new terrain generation. But uh, anyway, so you see what happened there. He just gets carried along and um, gets automatically crushed right there. And it goes into here. So that's it for now, and I will show you in the survival world once we get all that. I'll show you some of the design considerations that we have um, in place. Alright, see you there. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back on the survival multiplayer server. And, um, well, I'm not including you on all of this build because it would get rather tedious. But let me just show you what I've done. Um, I will include a link to the DocM tutorial. You know what, let me turn the sound down a little bit here. That flowing water is a little bit too loud. Alright, that should be better. Alright, so I will include a link to the DocM tutorial on the description below. Um, for the time being, uh, you can see part of the progress here. I've got the lower floor um, and you can see my work areas right there. Got a bunch of stone brick in that chest and an infinite water source because it's a lot easier than climbing up and down ladders. And I'm currently working on finishing up the uh, doors. So that's the next step. Um, and I did not realize when I brought the wood up here how much doors actually take. And so I am out yet again. So I've got one door left there. Um, and uh, so yeah, I've got to go back down and get some more logs. But for now, let me just show you the progress. I've got the four villager holding cells in place. Right there, 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 and here. Um, and just a note about how high we are using the shift key because I don't want to fall. I've got some water sources at the bottom so I can do a quick drop but um, they're not right below this thing so I'm just holding shift for the time being. So we are up 40 blocks or at least the bottom right there is 40 blocks above that level and the reason why is that in 1.6 the AI for zombies was increased so that they could pathfind up to 40 blocks away. Uh, it used to be 16, I believe, and now it's 40. And they lock on to either players or villagers. Now I'm going to have, hopefully, 
four villagers in here and there and there and there and if any of these holding cells was within 40 uh, blocks of um, unlit space and that includes down in caves underneath the surface then zombies would start trying to pathfind and then if they could not find a path they would continue trying to find a path until one showed up um, and that is actually a bug in 1.6 um, I don't know if it is available or a fix is available I don't think it is I've been watching the story or the uh, JIRA um, entry is their bug tracker um, and I don't think it's gotten fixed yet so um, anyway I'll, I'll keep y'all in the know about that but the reason why we're up 40 is because of that potential source of lag on the server so um, I just decided we're gonna avoid it and go up 40 so we're up pretty high and uh, so yeah um, for now I need to go down and get some more logs and then I will be back up with more doors so um, I will be right back alright ladies and gentlemen we are back and we've got more doors so here we go So I've got to concentrate a little bit because I am kind of high up in the air and I definitely would not survive that fall. So uh, I've, I've come to figure out, well I'm, I'm just guessing at the moment actually, um, but I'm thinking that the building this thing is actually the easy part. And since we have yet to get the villagers, that's probably going to be the more difficult job. But I'll get this built and then we will pull in the villagers at some point here. You know what? Let me fill my hotbar. There we go. You know, I could try and get a zombie to spawn up here. And if it ended up being a zombie villager, could just heal it. Oh, you know, I had... Ah, there we go. That's going to get in the way. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Let me get some light. It's a bit dark. I wonder why. Hmm. Light there, light there. Alright, and now we will pull off these helpers. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. The main section is complete. Now it's a matter of going up one more. So, um, so yeah, I will cut to that. So it'll be pretty quick for you, and it'll be a little bit of work for me. In fact, it might be another few hours because um, it is a about time for dinner. So, anyway, I will. Well, let's see, how long has this been going actually? It might have been going for a while. So, you know what? I'm going to call this quits for now. So, until next time, you know, maybe since I'm doing the shovel. Until next time, this is Soap the Great, and we are building an iron farm as we are building this city. I will see you next time. Ciao.